Now let's talk a little bit about functional programming. The basic idea of functional programming is that a function can be used as the basic building block of the program and be passed over to different places in the program. In order to do that, you should be able to assign a function to a variable. That's the very basic support for functional programming, and uh, Swift does have that. For example, here we have a function add, which takes integer as parameters and return one integer. Another function multiply also takes two integer as parameter and return one integer. And here we have a variable f1, and f1 is a function. And the function takes two integer as parameter and return one integer. So as you see, f1 is a function that has the same function signature as add and multiply. As a result, you can assign add to f1, and when you call f134, it returns 7. You can also assign multiply to f1, and now when you call f134, it returns 12. So this is how a function can be used as a variable. Now let's extend the idea. If a function can be assigned to a variable, it should also be able to used as a parameter to another function, which is exactly what will happen next. Here we have a function which takes three parameters. The first parameter f is a function that takes two integer and return one integer. The second and third parameters are arrays. The return value is also an array. What this function does is the function f, which is the first parameter, is applied to each element of array 1 and array 2, and the result is appended to the returned array. So if I call array op add, followed by two arrays, then the function add is applied to the two arrays item by item. So 2 added to 4, 3 added to 5, 4 added to 6. The result is 6, 8, 10. And if I call the function with multiply and two arrays, the result is 8, 15, 24. So this is how a function can be used as a parameter to another function. If a function can be used as a parameter, it should also be able to be used as a return value of another function. And that is what this example does. Get op function is a function that takes an integer parameter and return another function. If flag is equal to zero, it will return add, otherwise it will return multiply. This syntax is a little bit confusing when you first see it, and hopefully you eventually get used to it. This function is not very useful because both add and multiply functions are global functions. What will be more useful is when the nest function is involved. And here is an example of a nest function. The getOp2 function is similar to the getOp function. It takes one integer parameter and returns a function. And in the function body, we define another function add and a function multiply. And when a flag is zero, we return add, otherwise we return multiply. These two functions are called nested function because they are nested inside another function. This kind of pattern is more useful because we have two other functions encapsulated inside of the function body. Now let's extend the idea more. We can also save a function inside an array. So this array is an array of functions. And I can append add to the array I can append multiply to the array. And then I can even loop through the array. For each function inside of the array, I do something with the function. So as you see, this is a very powerful technique. You can also create a dictionary of functions, which I'd like to leave as homework for you to practice. This is a small introduction of functional programming. Next time, we'll cover closure. And with the help of closure, will introduce more functional programming techniques. That's all for now. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and see you next time.